Good morning, everybody. My name is, can you hear me? Everybody hear me? Thumbs up. Which slide are they seeing? Which slide are you seeing right now? First one. Here we are, Kickerland. Uh, yeah. Yep. Yes. Okay. Yes. Um, first of all, I'd like to introduce my uh, partner, business partner in crime, Roger Allen. Just so you know, there are some millennials connected with this <laughs> hey, organization, everybody. not just old ladies like me. Um, and I'd like to introduce Jenna Wilchinski. Wave your hands, Jenna. Jenna is, Jenna is our brand new marketing director. So Jenna is going to be going to town like crazy on this product line and is going to be taking a lot of cues from what you do with social media. If, if any, any advice that you can give to us, I'd love you to connect with Jenna. This is sort of, uh, it's our first time with Kickerland uh, doing a product. We have been a, the recipient of a great deal of support from Kickerland over the years and advice. And Laura has been a very important person in our development as, as somebody who's cared a lot about us. Um, basically, what you're gonna see here is something you've never seen before. And that is children designing products that actually go to, um, I'm trying to advance, Roger. Hold on a second. It's not doing anything. Hold on two seconds, everybody. A little glitch here. This is what I was doing. Okay, Fresh Artist is uh, doing... Barbara, before we start, there's a little feedback. Uh, I'm not sure if somebody has their... Yeah, are people talking in the showroom? Laura? Let's uh, turn my... Yeah, probably. Let me turn everybody off. Doesn't take much to distract me, huh? Um, thank you. So basically, our, our whole point of, of Fresh Artists is we saw something broken, and we decided that we would fix it, and we have in a very big way. Um, the whole point is that we're bringing vulnerable children, which means is a, is a, is a word for poor kids, uh, to in very poor schools across the country uh, into a partnership with, with people in C-suites in the corporate world together to solve a systemic problem in public education. Um, I'd like to first and always introduce our, our children. These are actual donors to, to uh, Fresh Artists. They are in fact philanthropists. Um, I'm, I'm good now. And we started a, a, an organization, it's a nonprofit about 13 years ago, where we empower young lives through art. We advocate for quality, quality education by dis displaying children's artwork in highly visible and unexpected places, like your puzzles. But, and then at the end of the day, we take all the money and we deliver art supplies and innovative art programs to schools in need. Um, the whole point is the artwork comes off the refrigerator where it normally lives in most people's homes and goes out into the world to change the world. This was a very quick view of what, what started the whole thing. We were brought in uh, on a 850,000 square foot building in Philadelphia, the new education center. They bought the old TV guide printing um, building, uh, turned it into a big administration building for the P Philadelphia public schools, brought me in and put me in this atrium and said, I want art, children's artwork everywhere I look. The superintendent told me, I asked him what his budget was. He said, of course, what's the answer? You all know, zero. Um, but he said, I'll find the money. You come up with a good idea and we'll do it together. I brought in uh, Roger, who, uh, who, who, Raj, not advancing again here. Raj, there we go. Well. I'll use the touchpad. Okay. Um, he had one idea and instantly his idea was to digitize the artwork, make it really big and put it everywhere throughout the building. Very simply without any frames, without any glazing. Basically it was just, we used sign printing equipment um, with a local shop in Philadelphia and um, it was very inexpensive and he actually donated it to us because he'd had six kids go through the public schools. Everybody, during this process of putting this artwork throughout this ginormous building, everybody who came in wanted to buy one and we kept pushing them away saying, they're not for sale, we're just decorating the building, go away. But after a while, what we realized 
during this process was that the funding for art began to vaporize. It literally dropped like a lead balloon. Um, it started out with every art teacher in the district, and there were 256 art teachers, it's a big district, having $500 to spend for all of their children for the whole year. It figures out to about 43 cents per child per year for art supplies um, until it went down to nothing. When it went down, down to nothing, we really got angry and then we got put ourselves into action because we believe, as we still do, that art is an essential part of every kid's education. Why? It's because art has been proven now to, to um, that 21st century skills for the, for the new entrepreneurial economy need critical thinking, critical, creative problem solving, risk taking, collaboration, innovation, and entrepreneurship. These are all things that are necessary and very little courses in middle school or high school teach these. Art does. We had an aha moment when we realized that there was an unlimited supply of children's artwork in the world that was just smashing, gorgeous, shockingly beautiful. And there was an unlimited supply of desire to have this large blown up, scaled up artwork in businesses. Um, what we decided to do was to start a nonprofit to save art in public schools. It's very simple. We would at, invite children with, um, with great looking art to donate the digital image of that one piece of, of selected art. Here's a little boy and his father with a blown up piece of his artwork made with paper mosaics from paint chips. You'll see that later. Then we would go back to the, we saved all of the business cards when people were throwing them at us when we were decorating this ginormous building. It took us 18 months to do the building. And we went, called them up and we said, okay, now we're ready for you. You wanted to buy this art, you can't buy it, but you can make a donation to our nonprofit where we take the money and buy art supplies and give them to public schools. Now this is your chance and you get a little tax deduction. So they were kind of thrilled about that. This is a, this is a piece from the, um, this piece was probably maybe five inches by seven inches originally. And this is what it looks like when it's blown up. It's absolutely gorgeous. This is in the headquarters of W.L. Gore. What we did then, what, what do we do with the money? We buy art supplies and we deliver them in two different ways. We, we have art kit grants that any art teacher in America, and I think we have some Canadian uh, teachers as well, uh, who apply for our grants every year. And we have different themes and they get to pick what they need. And either we ship them or they pick them up from our dock. That's the first thing, the art kit grants. The second way is we decided people were, manufacturers of art supplies were beginning to send us pallets of things. Um, Liquitex paint, Arsha's paper, um, Mako ceramics uh, glazes. And we didn't know what to do with it. We didn't want to be in the shipping business. So we started doing surprise supplies. And we, we, we just called all the art teachers in the region saying, stop over on Tuesday, take all you want. It was really fun and the kids loved it. The solution was a, a nonprofit that was 100% child driven. Okay, well, that was. Kids from okay. across the school, across the country, uh, have donated more than 2,300 pieces of art. And I'm, I'm having a little problem listening. There we go. Um, okay, so basically we empower, the whole, the whole focus of this organization is to empower children who think they have nothing to give. 10% of the kids in our collection or in any large metropolitan urban district, school district, um, are homeless. The rest of the children, um, it's about maybe 50 to 80, 50 to 60 percent are living in poverty, uh, very high poverty, some of them. What we have done is basically empower the children by donating one piece of art from their collection, which we select. It's a very carefully curated collection. My background is, was in running art museums all my life, so I know a little bit about what good art list looks like. 
And Roger, is the, as the designer, has the, the technology and the design sense to know what will scale up big. Um, and the children donate their art and, and piece, many of the pieces really uh, impact hundreds of thousands of children across the country. This is a young girl uh, with, is a senior in high school visiting her sixth grade artwork in SAP, which is one of the largest corporations in the world. Um, this is, we'd like to introduce some of our, our, our wonderful philanthropists. This is Rovic. Um, he's showing me he's the picture. He's a kindergartner. He's showing me in, in the picture I took, how big was your original piece of art? He's showing me it was about, about 12 inches big. So we call him a philanthropist because he donated his art. And I'm going to go back. Um, hold on a second. I don't know how to go back. I'm going to go back. The, the thing about Rovic is his piece of art that you're looking at that he made in kindergarten, blown up big, has impacted through art supplies being delivered 36,000 children. 36,000 children, one kindergartner. I'd like to introduce you also to this piece of art, which we call Chartreuse Drips. This is made by this young woman who went to the HMS School for Children with Cerebral Palsy. She made this artwork when she was at six, 16 years old. And this is one of the top two pieces of art chosen in our collection. And this piece of art has impacted 302,000 children. Now, Amanda cannot speak, cannot stand, and cannot feed herself. She made this with a brush tied onto um, swimming pool noodles, those flexible foam things, and dipped in art, and it took her three months to make it. It's the single most important piece in the collection. And Amanda was thrilled to be able to become a philanthropist and have purpose in her life. How do we deliver the programs then? The, the art supplies, you saw how we deliver those. We deliver interesting programs too. We have internships for children in the region, in a five county region, which includes Philadelphia, Norristown, Camden, New Jersey, one of the um, poorest uh, metropolitan areas in, in the country. Uh, this is big art. You can see that the machines have been donated um, all the big printers now, we're doing all of our own printing in-house and we're training young people in how to print decals and the big art. We have something called Cool Jobs Expo. We realized that 52% of the children whom we were serving, 52% um, dropped out between eighth and ninth grade in Philadelphia public schools. Um, an appalling rate, we decided that they just didn't know enough people that had very cool jobs and had successful jobs so that if we introduced them, um, we, we, would, we would be able to get them to see that their reason to stay in school is to pursue a career in the creative economy. This is the head of Urban Outfitters showing the kids what he does. This is, uh, we've had, we have uh, executive chefs who have um, baked Beyonce's birthday cake. So these are, these are top creative people these are um, uh, monkey boys showing kids how they make props for Saturday Night Live. Um, this is design labs. Design labs were actually um, creating products that go to market so that kids can experience real jobs in the creative economy. This is a young boy working with one of our gra graphic designers who's on our board. Um, this was our first product line. It's still available. Um, we started out making matching games uh, with, and Anthropology was our first customer. We started, raised the money uh, to begin with on Kickstarter and we have had these, this, there are six, six different titles. We've had them reprinted three different times uh, in America actually, interesting. Creighton Barrel discovered us and Creighton Kids wanted to do a line of uh, bedding designed by children. And this is the, the bedding that was designed by children in the very space that I'm sitting in right now. Um, throw pillows, sheets, duvets, uh, the, the collection called Artistic uh, was on sale for about almost two years, eight, 18, 20 months on their website, in their stores and online. 
Um, this is probably my favorite project, and you're gonna, you, you have one of the puzzles um, that's made with, with this. So I wanted to introduce you to chip art. We discovered an, an art teacher who was making the pieces that you see in, in the foreground. Those were the original pieces that we sort of fell over in a classroom and went, oh my God, these are gorgeous. What is this? Because we have never seen, you know, construction paper is not very attractive. It's kind of dull. This was brilliant color. And she said, oh, that's a, that's a box of uh, color sample chips from uh, Home Depot, from Bear Paint. I collected them, all the colors you pick when you're redoing your house. She said, I always throw them in a shoebox and, and I pull them out and let my kids make uh, paper mosaics out of them. My head exploded. I thought, oh my God, what a great idea. So it took me three years, but I finally got to the right guy, the president of Bear Paint in Santa Ana, California, where we were able to make an appeal and said, what do you do with all the colors that you get rid of or when you change from the Martha Stewart line to the Eddie Bauer line or whatever? He said, well, we dumpster them. We literally dumpster them. We throw them outside in the back of the Home Depot into the dumpsters and they go into landfills. I said, would you give them to me? Send them to us. We will repurpose them and make them into art kits and do incredible projects with kids. And, and her, her theory was do it on recycled cardboard. So these are, these are recycled, repurposed, not, not used, but, but would have been thrown out into landfills. And we, we have lesson plans to tell kids, this is some little tiny kids doing selfies. And then of course, you've got the puzzle. This is um, the older kids, which are much more sophisticated. And look at the techniques. Um, these are eighth, ninth, twelfth graders, and they needed something sort of cool to do. So we said, why don't you make portraits of elders in your community that are important to you? Honored elders like your pastor, your grandma, the guy that runs the bodega down the street that always gives you free bubble gum. Um, and these are the portraits that were made by those thrown out obsolete paint color chips. Aren't they fabulous? And when you get the puzzles, look at all the different techniques that these kids learned in making mosaics. Um, this is the other puzzle. I'll go into those right now. This is, um, this is the Zany Zoo. These were made by 789 children, selected from 789 children in the Norristown School District where we put the all call out to make a portrait of a wild animal in a little local zoo for as on the anniversary of the 50th anniversary of Earth Day, which was last April. Then the last um, all call that we did uh, was the flower power with the Philadelphia, famous Philadelphia flower show where every one of the children adopted a powerful flower. And we said, you've got to do it sort of shoulders up, the flower, shoulders up. So I'm going to introduce you to that particular project. Here is the young person starting out with a photograph of, of a passion flower. And you can see that she has, the teacher has showed her how to do a view, find a viewfinder into, you know, cropping it down to the important parts of the flower. Here is Izzy doing with her half done uh, water, beautiful water lily. You, she see in one hand the photograph that we provide. All of the things you see here are things we provide. It's our idea. It's the idea of doing something big. And here is here is her her flower half done. And then here is the final Isadora's fine final uh, watercolor. And this all of the kids. There were two two thousand two hundred and fifty four kids that entered this contest and we chose 99 for our collection. I'm going to show you um, the, the, what we, how we raise some of the money um, and that is by putting the art into corporations. We are the only corporate art program in the world that features exclusively features art donated by children. And I thought you'd get a kick. This is actually one of our staff members. This is Alex installing big, huge, and again, remember the, the little kids you saw holding the little chip art was seven inches by seven inches, the originals on cardboard. And this is the, this is the whole process of scaling up. And in fact, 
uh, amplifying the effect of, of the work. Um, and he's installing, and this is what that installation looks like in the Children's Literacy Initiative. Isn't that stunning? Um, this is a, a community center in Philadelphia, brand new rehab, and this is some more of the children's artwork. Uh, the piece in the, set, in the foreground is a piece from children in, a child in Brooklyn, Brooklyn College Academy. So we have art from all over the world. This is another use of the chip art in a very elegant place in a huge insurance company. Isn't that great? Um, this is something that we did just a, a few months ago in Long Island City, uh, a brand new rehab building called the Jacks, uh, right on the waterfront. Uh, it's a Tishman Spire building. And the piece that you see as wallpaper, which is another way corporations use the children's art, is absolutely stunning. And this was another small piece of art done as an experiment using experimenting with watercolor, wetting the paper. I'm sure all of you are, that are artists have done this. You wet the watercolor paper, drop in colors, let them kind of bleed, let them dry, and then the next day come in and, and sort of isolate the different shades, the different tones. That blown up is just knockout. Um, basically, what we have done is to create a way that the children's art can go to work. It is a unique um, circle of, of, of philanthropy where the children's art fulfills a real business need, all businesses need art, while raising funds for future art making and under, severely underfunded public schools. All the time we hear what a win, 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 win this is for everyone. And we hope that Fresh Artist products are a win for all of you all of the proceeds that, that will come from the puzzles um, will come to us and will be used to create both, de deliver art supplies to schools with empty shelves all over the country and Canada. Um, and they also, and, and really almost more powerfully, will have demonstrated constantly to other children, even in suburban districts and fancy private schools, they, they show that what, look what kids can do. Kids are very under, under, uh, under ex expectations, short, short sighted expectations. Children have run this, children are generating the income. They trust us to take all of that income and pour it back into the schools. Um, none of the children donating their art ever receive any money. They are giving it freely for the benefit of other children. Sometimes schools that they go to get, get supplies mostly don't just because it's, it's such a great need. So these children are give, giving selflessly. They're learning many, many uh, important things. Empathy for other children they're learning how to give. We talk about the heart as a muscle, as we know it is, keeping all of us alive. Um, but we call it the giving muscle. It's the muscle that, that, that if the more you use it, um, the more you give. So the children are transformed. Um, one of the wonderful things that somebody always asks me, well, what, what's, a, what's the most meaningful thing a child has ever said to you, a child in your collection. And it, it was uh, a, a day that we brought a, a young man, about 17 years old, into actually into this building that you're looking at right now in another part of the building. And we showed him his artwork that was blown up as big as Wanea's is here. And when we took kids into the corporate interior to see their artwork scaled up, sort of shockingly big, uh, remember, most kid art is, you know, small, and they walk up to something that they made that's just huge. We, we back off and just let them sort of commune with it for a few minutes. Um, he turned to us after about a minute with tears pouring down his cheeks. And he looked at me and he said, I guess I really am somebody now. I'm a fresh artist, aren't I? And at that point, of course, we started to fall apart. And uh, it was an, a moment where we realized 
people say, well, what are your metrics? Is what you're doing, you go to a lot of trouble for these kids. Is it really working? And we've delivered more than $2.5 million of art, art supplies into some of the poorest schools across the world. We have empowered 2,300 kids who have donated their artwork. Um, sometimes we see the kids. We did when we were very young. We met them all. Now they're from all over the country, Santa Fe, Denver, New York. Um, we know it works because we can tell from the children that this is meaningful to them. And once they feel that they have been empowered, the way that the world buffets them and throws them around, they will have a different response to. They have grit and they know that they have purpose. And as you know, all of you who get up every morning and go to work to represent these wonderful companies like Kickerland, know that it feels good to have something to, to go to every day. Well, the kids feel the same way. They feel as if they're empowered and it is working. Um, basically, that's the story. Um, we are thrilled to be in this collection. We hope that you have fun putting these powerful puzzles with a purpose in shops throughout the world. 100% of the profits will be used to strengthen the art in our poorest schools, but also even the, the kids that buy them and take them home and the grown-ups that play with the, with the children will realize that kids made these puzzles and look what kids can do if people like all of us give them access and that's basically what Fresh Artists is, and we're so grateful to you. Does anybody have any questions about what we do or how we do it? If you want to unmute and ask a question. There's a little story in each one of the puzzles that talks about the project that is that that puzzle design represents um you can go to our you can direct people to our website i suppose you could show them this this uh this little uh talk that we just gave um i think that it strengthens the product to have um to have a real story like this to tell potential clients uh, as laura said they Museum shops are a great source of interest. Uh, our, our products are in a lot of museum shops. And, um, but any gift shop would love something like this. Laura, you want to take it over? Okay. You hear me? Yep, I hear you. You hear me? Okay. Uh, well, I cried, Barbara. Thank you very much. I'm I was sorry. Like, I, had to, I had to put my mask on and my glasses on. I was like, oh my gosh, really touched me. Um, uh, thank you again, Barbara, for taking time on your birthday. Again, happy birthday. Um, I know you said this was a great gift to um, be able to talk to people about this program. So at, at uh, 72, thank you very much. It's, Laura, at 72 years old, as passionate as I am about having founded this with my son, working with Jenna, it is a passion project, it is a mission, it's not a job. Um, I can't think of an, a thing that I would rather do today on my 72nd birthday than to be able to pitch to the people that are going out into the world to take our children with you and tell this story because this is a powerful story. We're the only organization like this in the, in the world. Um, you have a totally unique product. Go out and have some fun with it. I also want to tell you that 86% of the children in our collection are children of color. And by having people buy this product, they are doing something very definitely for black lives, Hispanic lives, and children who are living in danger and deprivation. There are no fancy kids in our collection. They are only the children who, who go to these very poor schools. So this is the story. You now have something to walk into a, into a shop or a, or a business 
or, or Target or whomever you're selling to and say, look, I've got, I've got something nobody else has got. I've got a product made by the very children in, the, in our world that need to be included in the conversations.